Okay. Um, as part of the series of uh, grammar tutorials, um, I've decided for rule number four to spend some extra time reviewing subordinate and independent clauses um, and comma usage with regard to those because those tend to be the things that our students struggle with the most. So I, I come back to our, our fourth rule which says if the subordinate clause comes first leading into an independent clause, a comma is needed after the subordinate clause. And we've said that that's because there's a pause between the two. Um, and then conversely, if the independent clause leads into a subordinate clause, uh, no comma is needed. Uh, but I'm going to right now go into a review. The first thing that we have is to review clauses. What is a clause? And in the previous lesson, I said that it's a group of words that has a subject and a verb. And there are two basic kinds, the independent ones that can stand on their own as sentences, and then the subordinate clauses, which cannot stand on their own as sentences, usually because they begin with a subordinating conjunction. In the previous lesson, too, I showed a list of uh, subordinating conjunctions, but subordinating conjunctions are words that link two clauses together, though rendering the clause that it is attached to unable to stand on its own as a sentence. Um, that list I have, I'm pulling it up right now, like after, although, though, unless, whenever, uh, whereas, and, and the next lesson is actually going to talk about why we use these more um, in our writing and how they can make our writing more effective. Uh, but in either case, uh, for today's lesson, it's just a review exercise. And the review exercise that we're trying to figure out is, are these independent or subordinate clauses? So I'm going to scroll down with that question in mind. Are these independent or subordinate clauses? Start with number one. After the school staff was replaced, does it stand on its own as a sentence or is it a subordinate clause? We go through number two. During the time when I was in college, number three, the football team was successful last year. Now with the first three, too, you know, you have to ask yourself this question. If we put a period at the end, would it stand on its own as a sentence? Um, same thing with this one. If we put a period after college, would it stand on its own as a sentence? The football team was successful last year. Could we put a period there and make it its own sentence? All right, moving on to number four. Whereas he believes that the school should remain open. Whereas he believes the school should remain open. And I'm actually, instead of going forward, we'll go over the answers right now for, for one through four. Um, after the school staff was replaced, if we put a period there, this could not stand on its own as a sentence. And the reason it couldn't is this after right there is a subordinating conjunction. There should be something there. Now, we could, uh, particularly an independent clause. Now, we could put a comma after this and say, after the school staff was replaced, um, the teaching got better, okay? And we could, the teaching got better, would that be able to stand on its own as a sentence? Yes. Or we could even put that very same thing at the front, the teaching got better after the staff was replaced, and then put the period here. Uh, but this cannot stand on its own as a sentence, and therefore it is a subordinate clause. Um, during the time when I was in college. Once, a, once again, um, during is a subordinating conjunction. It's a time relationship subordinating conjunction. And um, particularly during the time when, that's the thing that kills us, is when it really is the subordinating conjunction. So we could actually get rid of this, but the when at that point becomes a subordinating conjunction. It is a time relationship. When I was in college, period, wouldn't stand on its own as a sentence. We move on to number three. The football team was successful last year, period. That actually is an independent clause. It can stand on its own as a sentence. Moving on to number four. Whereas he believes the school should remain open. 
I don't know about you, but there's something missing there, namely an independent clause to go with it. Whereas he believes the school should remain open, we should put comma, I believe it should close. Now, this works because this whereas is a subordinating conjunction and it's a compare and contrast one. Um, but what I'm going to do is just move on. Number five. If only time did not go by so quickly, can that stand on its own as a sentence? If only time did not go by so quickly. Okay, number six. Because my father said so. Because my father said so. And then number seven. Since I began teaching... Okay, now if we look back, we'll start with number five. If only time did not go by so quickly, what's missing is an independent clause. We, this could not stand on its own as a sentence, and therefore it is a subordinate clause. We move on to number six. Once again, we have a subordinating conjunction, because, and that because, being a subordinating conjunction, renders this unable to stand on its own as a sentence, because there's the word because. Number seven, we have a subject and a verb, but once again, this since is a subordinating conjunction, which is a time relationship conjunction. And because of that, this cannot stand on its own as a sentence. Number eight, although I'm trying to succeed, can this stand on its own as a sentence? Moving on to number nine. Despite that the team showed lack of effort, does that stand on its own as a sentence? Number ten. The team showed lack of effort. Okay, now reviewing the last three. We have a clause here. I am trying to succeed. But what we have at the very beginning of it is a subordinating conjunction called although. And this is one of those compare-contrast logic-based uh, subordinating conjunctions. And because this clause begins with this subordinating conjunction, it cannot stand on its own as a sentence. Therefore, is a subordinate clause. Number nine is also a subordinate clause. And once again, it starts with a subordinating conjunction, and it's that phrase, despite that. That by itself serves the same function as a subordinating conjunction. And therefore, this is unable to stand on its own as a sentence. And then number 10, the team showed lack of effort. Notice we have the team showed lack of effort, but there is no subordinating conjunction or anything at the beginning of that. And because there's no subordinating con conjunction, and yet we have a subject and a predicate. Number 10 can stand on its own as a sentence and is an independent clause. So with this exercise, I hope that it's clear the difference between subordinate and independent clauses. And this is a review of the previous uh, lesson. Um, if you can correctly classify you know, what is what and you can write your own examples um, of subordinate and independent clauses, uh, you're well on your way to being able to write very good sentences. My next lesson is actually about um, why subordinate and independent clauses are really important for good writing um, in a very uh, strict and logical sense. So um, I hope this uh, clarified some things.